What is going on guys, Renegade Ninja here, and I'm bringing you an Elder Scrolls Online video, I know. Pretty random, but uh, I don't really have a game that I'm super, super into to uh, kind of delve into super hardcore, but I've been playing Elder Scrolls Online a lot and I've really been enjoying it. One thing that I've noticed is kind of missing from the YouTube video selection or community or whatever you want to call it, are builds that, that you know, that normal people will use. Um, you know, a, a lot of builds that are in Elder Scrolls Online are more like, okay, you're with 12 people, you have dedicated two dedicated healers, two dedicated tanks, and all you need to do is melee or, or FP, or I'm sorry, a DPS the crap out of something. Or, you know, all you gotta do is heal or whatever. Or they're made for solo gameplay, which this game does not thrive on solo gameplay. Here, let me just collect this real quick. And a lot of people I've noticed kind of play with just a few people. That's what I do. I don't know if you look in the upper left-hand corner there with my add-ons, but I've got about two people I play pretty consistently with. Sometimes we'll pick up another one to do some dungeons, but we take out veteran dungeons or level 2 dungeons with just three people all the time. And I actually, before you look at the character and say, oh my gosh, he's a lower level, uh, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I have other characters. Um, this one just has really, really been coming together incredibly nicely, and uh, the combos I've put together with the moves are just really good. And I googled this before I made the character, and most of my videos that I've watched weren't exactly my build. I mean, I kind of played off of them a little bit and learned from them. Um, but because they are based on, hey, do as much DPS as you possibly can and somebody else is going to heal you. You know, in this game, when you're just playing with a squad and you're doing dungeon crawling or you're just questing or delves or whatever, um, you're going to want to do multiple things. And that's what makes this game different than like other MMOs is this game is made for your characters to do multiple things like... Uh, DPS some with uh, a back bar of healing or a back bar of or a tank uh, DPS or whatever, you know, um, and so I think I've put it together really really well where my DPS is actually insanely high and I heal and buff my team and everybody knows has played MMOs healers are just always wanted but I also can take some hits so I'm not made of glass and that's the biggest thing people want to DPS like crazy but they're made of glass and if you don't have someone healing you you die now you're looking at my character now and you're saying I oh, know it looks pretty glassy to me um, but this is where let's get into the build and I'll explain it to you this is a Dragonite build I'll put it in the title so you guys you know know but this is a Dragonite flame mage that I've built and a lot of people have made this this uh, this class but like I said it's made for very specific situations or solo play which I feel the majority of people are not actually doing so if you like to play with a few people two three four whatever and even if it's just you and a buddy and you go around and play and quest and do things together this is a great setup for that um, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring you into it first thing easy you're just gonna put everything into your magicka uh, that's that's pretty simple I'm running the mage right now I don't know if that's the best one but uh, this this Dragonites, uh, especially Flame Mages, they have a hard time with sustain. So uh, I'm not really sure if I'm going to do the spell damage one or this one, to be honest. Um, like I said, I'm level 33, so don't judge it too much quite yet. Uh, my gear is nothing amazing. It's really just what I'm picking up right now. I also craft. So uh, I'm going to do a Flame Staff, and my back bar is a Restoration of Healing Staff, okay? I'm going to... I'm going to... Uh, gear five light and two heavy the heavy is going to be my helmet and my chest piece the reason is is the, even though that's actually wrong right now but it's because that's just what i picked up and i'm just kind of rolling with it but the helmet and the chest piece is what you want to do heavy ideally because they're going to do the most amount of armor protection which is going to make you tankier because a glass cannon is no good when he's dead right uh, these are all going to be magical based and i run my enchantments mostly based on maximum magicka now that being said if i feel like oh man i'm dying a little quickly i'm going to throw some health glyphs on there too uh that this is all going to be magicka based as well i'm mostly a dps my back bar is a buff heal that helps me and my entire team stay alive and continue to kick ass all right so let's get down this right now so if you know anything about if you know anything about the dark elves their skills are very, very, very good for flame damage, okay? So this is why it goes really good with a Dragonite and a Flame Mage, because they're really, really good at flame damage. Now, crafting, it's not that big of a deal. I actually am running blacksmithing, closing, and wordworking. I do this for my team. I didn't put a whole... I actually just respec that. I had a bunch of points in here, uh, but I'm respecing it a little bit. 
Uh, I do this for my team because it's all very similar and it's kind of confusing, so I just kind of handle all of it and my team handles other stuff for me. Now, what you're going to want to do too is eventually, this is not most important, but eventually you want to get some alchemy up because you want to get this one, medicinal use, because when you use potions, you want the resulting effects to last 10% longer. So, you know, if you go to your potion, I don't know how new you are at this game if you're watching it, but uh, you can see here, uh, that's a poison. We don't want that. Where do we want here? Uh, let's just do a standard potion. There. See, your health re regeneration by 20% for 10.7 7 seconds, but the cooldown's 45. Well, if you knock that up, you're going to have extra health regeneration or magical regeneration or both. If you've got someone who's doing alchemy, I've got a buddy that does alchemy, so it's extra good. Um, so that's a good thing to put on that. Now, these are just, these are just you know, on the back end. Put it in the back of your pocket. You know, think about it for later. Now, um, I'm going to go over my abilities here, and the first bar is going to be my DPS bar, and it's going to make easy sense. You guys are going to understand it easy. Standard of Might, everybody kind of knows. You drop it down, it, it does serious damage. It's pretty easy. If you're having a hard time staying alive or your team's not very good at kind of keeping you alive, I found Dragon Leap with the damage shield morph is really good to keep your ass alive. But if you're just going for DPS and your team's pretty solid, they've got a pretty good... Uh, uh, situation going on standard of might is what you want now this is gonna be your spammer okay so if you know in this class sustain is hard to keep up meaning you run out of magicka and it's hard to get you more magicka I got two a couple things to help you sustain your magicka to regen your magicka and they work really well this is your spammer this is what you do after you do everything else you've got all your DOTs on them damages over time you got all your buffs and your heals over time on your team and now you're just dealing some damage you got extra electro magicka lava whip it's good and uh, when you slot it you get extra spell and weapon damage it, uh, for art and flame abilities this is good it's a it's the best uh, spammer you can do. A lot of people know that. Now, <clears throat> Burning Embers is amazing as well because it heals you when the, when the DOT is over. So not only it hits them hard, it does a strong DOT, real strong, but it's only for one, one person. It's, it's a single. You can't put it on a bunch of. It's not a, a, an AOE. But it heals you, and that helps your life keep you alive. You'd be surprised how much this helps. Um, fiery, or I'm sorry, Engulfing Flames. Engulfing Flames, you're going to run with... Um, you drop this down in a cone in front of you, and it just is an AOE DOT. It hit, anything that kind of steps on it gets burned over 10 seconds. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, that's the wrong one. This is Fiery Breath. My bad. The complete mistake. That's my, uh, that's this one that I'm explaining. Let's, as a matter of fact, let's go here. Elemental Blockade. You'll drop it down. It's an AOE DOT. This is what I was just describing. I'm sorry about that. And it deals uh, just magic damage over time. If it's fire, it deals additional damage to burning enemies, which your burning enemies are always going to be on fire. So it works out really well, right? This is just good for mobs, really, just to keep the, to keep the mobs down. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go back to what I was talking about. Engulfing Flame. This blows fire out of your mouth at anything in front of you. It's also a cone AOT DOT, but it's a much shorter range, right? This stacks really well because affected enemies take 9% more damage from all fire damage attacks. This is where I start my damage dealing. So I don't know if you can see my bar down here, but I have a system where it goes 3, 4, Q, 2, R. I know it's silly, but it just so happens to be what my fingers roll through. If you like 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, you can set them up this way. But I'm going to pop this, which instantly is going to do more damage from my fire attacks. I'm going to drop this because it's a DOT AOE, and I like that. I'm going to drop this because it's a DOT, and it's going to heal me, so I want to get that on them as fast as possible. But I don't want to do it before this one because it's going to make it stronger when I hit them with this one. This is Inferno. I'll explain that real quick. This is just the base Inferno. It's going to get stronger when I morph it. I just got it. I've been waiting to get this set up. I was using like Stone Fist or something before, but I knew it wasn't what I wanted. What this does is when it's slotted, you get Major Prophecy, increasing your spell critical rating, which is amazing because this is your damage bar. So your damage bar is going to be slotted and you're going to be getting crits like crazy, right? And... Uh, you're going to active this flame ab around you, and it deals five, every five seconds it shoots a flame ball at enemies. So essentially what you're doing is you're popping off all these DOTs. This is a very DOT-based character, and letting them work. It takes a second to get them all going, but it's like... Especially during delves and bosses like tough fights, you just keep these sustained on them, and you're going to deal way more damage than just spamming some crap. If you just want to spam an ability over and over again, you're not going to deal near as much damage as DOTs if you can keep them on them. This is just some icing on the cake, and it also increases my spell and weapon damage, so why not? Plus, you need a spammable every once in a while, right? Okay, so that's my main damage dealing bar. It's not super confusing. 
But the reason why I did that as opposed to all these is because you get tons of buffs. Remember, this is all flame damage, so we're putting tons of stuff on this guy. Now, let's go over to my back bar. I leave my standard of might on here just because when things get hairy and things get things get chaos in this game, especially when you're trying to heal, you're trying to keep your team alive, it's easier just to drop it when you got it, if you need it. Um, but here, once again, I go 3, 4. Uh, I believe this one I do 2, Q, but it doesn't matter. They're pretty uh, back and forth. And then uh, R. I'll explain why. So you got your uh, indigenous shield, ingenious shield, whatever, ingenious shield. Um, Essentially what it is, is you, draw, you, you slam on the ground and you get a damage shield and you're also giving your teammates a damage shield, which is really good. The damage shield's not super strong, but your teammates are going to keep alive. Like, uh, for example, I see a teammate starting to get low health. All I have to do is pop it and they can take a shot or two. So maybe they're rolling away. Maybe they're like, oh my gosh, I got to get out of here. I'm taking too much damage. Let me back up. Oh, boom, here, let me hit you with that damage shield. Not only does it keep them alive, but bam, I got myself a buff. My other dude got a buff. He can keep fighting. I can keep fighting. Maybe I need it, but it also buffs them. It also gives me major mending, increasing my healing done. So I pop this and then instantly pop this, which then gives me... See, I'm not a healer. I'm not going to stand running around he, watching my teammates slamming down like these abilities here. I'll go over them. Uh, well, like blessings of protection where you, you heal in a cone in front of you. You're put down a healing thing. I'm not going to do this because I, I, there's too much stuff going on. And I don't, I'm not going to chase around my, care, my, my teammates making sure they stay healed. Look, if someone's hurting and they say help, they need to protect themselves a little bit. Because remember, we're just talking about a two, three, four man squad. We don't have dedicated healers. So I'm just popping this like, here, have a damage shield, keep alive, boom, here, heal a little faster. And what it does is below 20%, it's just going to heal them for uh, 36,000 or 3,600 health and removes a harmful effect. So boom, keep them alive, you're welcome. But it also hits other people. So it's going to get me and I. sometimes I'll pop it twice, if I, especially if I'm rolling with a four-man group, one for each of everybody. It's not super high uh, magicka cost and it lasts 20 seconds. So I don't have to keep... The whole idea here is I'm mostly going to be on this bar, just doing some damage. If I aggro too hard and they start hitting me hard or I need to heal myself or my teammates, I pop back over to this bar. Or in 20 seconds, when this wears off, I pop back over to this bar. And the 20 seconds in battle is quite a long time. So you want to keep enough magicka that if you get in trouble, you're not just spamming, spamming, spamming. If you get in trouble, you pop back over here. And what I found is good is about one or two cycles of this. So bam, bam. Bam, bam, and then spam this a little bit. Maybe hit him for some light attacks, whatever. And then when this starts to wear off, do your cycle again. You have to kind of watch. It's good to have like a buff tracker or a, a debuff tracker on your enemies. Do it again, and then about that time, it's time to pop out these back on and keep your buffs up. So then I'm going to pop this bad boy, keep my teammates alive. Now, if my teammate is really, really almost dead, I'll pop this one. This will give them... Uh, steadfast ward this gives them a damage shield with a lot more damage shielding than this one but it's only for one player now when i morph this i'll get it for myself as well so that'll be really helpful but i figured i'd make a video now even though i'm not fully built yet so this is where it's clutch time oh gosh somebody save me i got you fam that's what this is for, right? So pop, pop, pop if you're in trouble. But if they're not in trouble, this is a lot of magicka. And if nobody's really hurting, you don't want to be popping this all the time. So I'm going to pop, pop, and then I'm going to come over here, right? And this releases a spray of spikes around me that causes DOT over 10 seconds. And it's also going to return damage to melee attackers. And it's going to give me major resolve and major warp, which is really, really useful because it keeps me alive. And the cool thing about this ability is, is it shows up on my back. So when I see this is gone, that little animation on my back, I know, like say I'm over here and I'm fighting and I'm doing my thing and I see my animation is gone. You can see my buffs on the lower right, but things get hectic. And if I don't see that go away, I know that it's time to pop back over to my back bar and get my other stuff going again. So it's a good tell for when things get really chaotic, right? Let's get back in this again. Entropy, always a good choice, right? It's a siphon. You're gonna hit somebody for 12 sec or a damage DOT for 12 seconds. It's gonna heal me. It's a weak siphon, it's not that great. But when I do it, it grants me major sorcery, increasing my spell damage for 20, 424% for 20 seconds. That's awesome. That's gonna help me not only uh, with this ability 
and my entropy it's going to help me on this entire bar so my back bar is actually helping me in multiple ways all these help me and this one helps me and my team and this one helps me and my team i guess all, all these ones help me and my team as well so not only am i kind of strong for solo but especially if you're just rolling and you don't have a healer or a tank this is where it's at now you can just turn anybody into a tank so uh, i kind of went over all my moves here now this is basic stuff um, you're going to go with light armor for obvious reasons. You're going to go with heavy armor, the other two, to get these bad boys to keep your gear stronger. Uh, I've heard of people putting one medium armor, and, like uh, one heavy and one medium instead of double mediums. I don't really see the bonuses of it that much. Um, I can see the weapon critical, maybe, but uh, y you're not a stamina build and you don't sneak, and these ones aren't really useful at all unless you have all five. So I don't see the... Oh, I guess this one's decent. But uh, I just don't see the... the, the uh, amazingness of it to be honest i would rather go with heavy now world magic uh i got some soul shatter some soul lock that's nothing exciting um your mage's guild yes this is entropy this is a really good one i um so that is that is awesome it's not i don't believe it's quite morphed yet so uh maybe i morphed it i can't remember at this point uh so i'll have to check into that it's been a while since i've played and used entropy so uh but yeah you're going to use these passives i believe i have a couple uh, I'm going to work on in the Undaunted passive line. But that is the build, okay? So if you're looking to start, you're starting a new character and you want a really good DPS, but you also can't be a glass cannon, or you want to, you want, you like teamwork. Maybe you're like, dude, I want to help my team. Like, I want to, I want to roll with like a three man, four man, two man team, and I really want to help them. I don't want to be just selfish and attack, attack, attack. This, this build is absolutely amazing. Now, I'm just going to show you real quick in a delve. I'm not going to eat any food or anything. I'm not really too worried about it. I usually eat for Magicka. Um, this can be changed as needed as your team needs. If you're dying too much, you will aggro the crap out of enemies. I'll tell you that right now. You deal damage like it's nobody's business, and it's AoE damage quite often, and they come at you. So you have to be able to take some shots. So if it's too much for you and you need to eat for health, go for it. Now, hopefully, you've got a teammate that's going to kind of help buff you as well and play some some team-based uh some team-based stuff as well. But right now, it's just me solo, but I'll still give you a rundown of what I would do if my team was around. So before I go into battle, I'm going to be like, you ready, guys? I'm going to pop my shield. I'm going to pop this once or twice, depending on my team. I'm going to throw this up, and then I'm going to come in with an entropy. Then we go to work. Now, these guys are going to be nothing but easy. Yeah, they die like nothing. Yeah, uh, everybody dies like nothing, but I actually need a little bit of a challenge. So here I'll... Oh, I'll pick up that quest in a minute. So I'm going to do the same, the cycle, just so you can see the cycle, because, well, uh, this is what the video is about to, about to end. So, bam, bam, I'm going to hit that. And then you can entropy, you don't have to. Now you're going to rock that, that, your slash, and then you're going to spam. <clears throat> now, one enemy, two enemies, it seems like I'm doing way too much. It's stupid. But let me go aggro some enemies here. Let's get some going here. Come on, guys. Oh yeah, for also for sustain, I've got a, a, a one more trick up my sleeve I want to show you in a second. Oh, let me, uh, getting a little serious over here. Oh no! Oh, don't worry, I got this, don't you worry. Now I'm going to switch over and heal myself. Oh, I didn't even need to, they're dead already. I shouldn't have used my ultimate, that was a little bit of an overkill. Just got a little nervous, okay. Didn't mean to pull them all, but I pulled them all. So when I get Harry, if you notice, my health started to drop. If my health would have dropped much more than that, I would have instantly switched over to my back bar and started popping these bad boys and keeping my own ass alive. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Now I want to show you one more trick. I just wanted to show you in action kind of how it works. Um, for sustain, since I told you you have a hard time with sustain, what I really like to do, so this bad boy is a flame damage it's clearly going to be a flame damage. It's your flame staff. But when I switch over to this, I like this one. If you hold it, you deal damage and absorb magicka back. Now, yeah, it's not a flame attack. Uh, you know, optimally, it'd be flame damage, not magical. But that restoring stamina is amazing because if I get in trouble and my sustain is bad and I know my sustain is bad and I'm running out of magicka and I got to keep my team buffed up and I got to keep myself buffed up, I mean, yeah, I can just kind of hang back and don't use any abilities, sure. But one way, I, by running out of Magicka, I just flip right over to this bar, and I just start, just start holding and zapping them, and I start sucking my Magicka right back. And then I'm, a couple seconds, 
I'm good to go. Now, of course, you want to weave things pretty well. I'm not a master at weaving, I'll admit it. But the weaving is you use ability, light attack. Ability, light attack. Ability, light attack. And that's how you weave. So, um, and that's going to help with your sustain as well. I don't know why I'm picking up crawlers. Uh, but that's going to help with things. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, I know it's not like the most master thing of this is the exact point you put everything into, period, to get the most DPS down to the, the last tenth of a DPS. This is for the everyday player who wants to enjoy this game but also wants to have a sweet build with awesome combos. That's what this video is for. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new. If you're a new subscriber, hit that little bell so you know when I'm uh, when I'm when I'm back, uh, when I'm making more videos, because I'm planning on making more. I've actually have already some made that are getting ready to go up. If you want to join me on ESO, feel free. My name is GeneNinja2006, just like the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. And yes, we have a guild, but it's kind of small. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day.